One of the things that sometimes keeps us back from manifesting the stuff that we want in our life could be a trauma or a shadow or, or a block. And these blocks are often things that we take on as children. I had created a block that told me that you are only entitled to money if you work hard. Now, where did I get that from? I grew up in an immigrant family. My family was never rich. My mom was a public school teacher. My dad worked in a department store and I saw how hard my dad worked. So when you're trying to manifest something, there are these energy patterns in us that we took on as children. As children, we have a meaning making machine. We are too young to fully understand what's going in the world. So we create meaning, but then these meanings stay with us and they are designed to protect us. This hard work thing wasn't a bad belief. It was simply what as a child I took on because I observed my parents. We often take on our blocks, not because they are bad or negative or evil. We take them on because we take them on out of love, but we can also heal them with love. So how do you identify your block? The final technique that I wanted to teach you guys and this is an addition to what we did earlier where we were creating intention, um, energy vortexes, right? So one of the things that sometimes keeps us back from manifesting the stuff that we want in our life could be a trauma or a shadow or, or a block. And these blocks are often things that we take on as children. So I'll give you an example. Way back in 2015, I was running a festival called A-Fest and it was the most incredible job you could imagine. I had given up that stupid dot com that I tried to start. I ended up starting a festival and A-Fest was so incredible as a job that I felt guilty for the money that we made. Every six months, I got to travel to exotic locations. I got to be on stage. The crowd was filled with 300 incredible entrepreneurs, typically from like some 40 or 50 different countries. I got to share the stage with all of these living legends like Marissa Peer or Sri Kumar Rao. And so I felt so guilty about the money that I was making that I decided to just make it a nonprofit. I was just giving away all the AFS revenue. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but it spoke to something that was not healed within me because at that time still, I was not incredibly wealthy. I did not have the dream house or the dream car. I couldn't fly business class everywhere, but I was giving this money away because I had created a block that told me that you are only entitled to money if you work hard. And if you're not working hard, you don't deserve the money. But can you imagine how awful that block could be? Because if I wanted to create a life right now where I only want to be able to work the time I need to work or create the type of life that John Butcher wanted, then that would never be possible because there's this energy pattern in me that says hard work equals money. And that is one of the most dangerous energy patterns you can have because it can burn you out. But also if you decide that you need rest, you need relaxation, you need recovery time, it can ruin your finances. Now, where did I get that from? I grew up in an immigrant family. My family was never rich. My mom was a public school teacher, a government school teacher. My dad worked in a department store. And when my dad, when I was 13 years old, my dad started an entrepreneurial business, knowing what he knew how to do. It was basically a warehouse. And so from the time I was a teenager, I would support my dad in his warehouse. Basically, he would order goods from India and China, package them, ship them to department stores. He was like an importer exporter. So I remember packing boxes, hauling them at the back of trucks. Like as a kid, as a 14 and 15 year old, that's what I was doing to support my dad's business. And I saw how hard my dad worked. I remember one day I was maybe 15. My dad comes home from work and he gets in the door and all of a sudden, just as he's getting in the door, he falls on his back, boom, and hits the ground. And my mom and I rushed to him. He had worked so hard that day, he barely had energy to stand when he walked in through the door. And so in my mind, I had this idea, hard work is what it takes to be an entrepreneur. So when I started Mind Valley, there was so much of hard work that I had to put in. And then something happened. I became a father. And I decided I wanted to be a good dad. So I decided I was going to leave work an hour earlier to come back to have time with my son, Hayden. But that block suddenly came up. 
Nope. If you're leaving work an hour earlier, you don't deserve your success. You can't have it because you cannot just work seven hours a day. You need to like put all of that in. You have to choose: be a good dad or work late in the evening. Now I chose being a good dad, but what I noticed is that immediately the company started to lose money. So in May 2008, when we were a very tiny company, all of a sudden. We were doing about a quarter million in revenue a month, but we were losing 20 grand a month, and our bank balance was getting lower and lower and lower. If we didn't end this leakage, we knew that in three months we were going to run out of cash, and we'd have to start laying off the 18 employees that worked at Mine Valley. Now I didn't understand what was going on back then. I didn't understand that there was this this block in me that was preventing success, a block that was making me choose either be a good dad or have success. And I didn't understand that this block came from what I had observed in my immigrant parent family, because my mom and dad worked so hard. As a government school teacher, my mom sometimes would be stationed two hours away. She had to drive two hours to teach at school, two hours back. So hard work was this idea that I had taken on that it was essential to success and survival. So, as the company was about to collapse, something happens sometimes when we go through shit, shitty situations. We get reflective, and in my case, I decided to go really deep in spirituality because I was feeling sad. I felt all of this weight on my shoulder. I remember diving into the work of Esther Hicks. I flew to San Diego to attend an Esther Hicks seminar. I read Neil Donald Walsh's newest book, which at that time was called Home with God. And then I attended a Harvecker seminar called Millionaire Mindset. And it was connecting the dots between all of these teachers, Esther Hicks, Neil Donald Walsh, Harvecker, that, that hard work rule or rule, bullshit rule, suddenly came to my realization. And as soon as I saw that, I could eviscerate it. I could see that there was no connection. There are people who work very little time and make tons of money. It had nothing to do with hard work. It had to do with your consciousness, with your abundance, with your abundance beliefs, with how smart you worked. And that realization came in June. Immediately in July, we hit a new revenue goal of 300k, and then August, September, October, November, things just started exploding. In November, that man joined the company, Ajit Nawalka. He created record revenue for us because he was so brilliant at what he did. In December, in December, so Ajit and I go all the way back to 2008. In December, we hit one million in revenue. We had grown 400%. In eight months, when that block was removed, and then there was no looking back. So today, I because I don't longer have that hard work is necessity to money. Now I can accept money even if I'm having fun. Like I literally like had difficulty taking money for AFES because I thought it's too much fun. I don't deserve this. And so these are how blocks can sabotage us. Can can sabotage sabotage? <laughs> What is happening to my English? This is how blocks can really fuck us up. <laughs> That was so much easier to say. So, so when you're trying to manifest something, sometimes we don't know it, but there are these energy patterns in us that we took on as children. As children, we have a meaning-making machine. We are too young to fully understand what's going in the world, so we create meaning. But then these meanings stay with us, and they are designed to protect us. This hard work thing wasn't a bad belief. It was simply what, as a child, I took on because I observed my parents and I loved my parents, and so I, I observed what they were doing, even though it was unhealthy. And I saw it as being good because of my love for my parents. So this is a really important lesson. We often take on our blocks not because they are bad or negative or evil. We take them on because we take them on out of love. But we can also heal them with love. So, how do you identify your blocks? Sometimes these are not at the surface. So, you got to work with your guides and intuition to uncover these blocks and then make them disappear. So, here's the technique. Okay, so you have the ball, the energy ball. 
you have this energy ball, you've put in three vibes into the ball from your intention, three vibes which are coming from the consciousness of what you want to create. So now you have these six different feelings or emotions. Now, I'm just picking six for simplicity. You could add seven, eight, nine, it doesn't really matter. But now, before you send it out, you want to clean up any blocks in your energy that might be holding you back. Okay, so this is what you do. You start by scanning yourself and just intuitively sensing where the blocks might be. You could even ask your guides and sometimes you could pretend as if they are pointing. So you might feel that maybe there's something in this part of your body, your chest area. Maybe there's something in your left knee. Now imagine you can see what this something is. Maybe it's a certain color. Maybe it's a certain shape. So what is that color? What is that shape? So an energy block might be the belief that you're not worthy. It might feel like a, like a black sphere. It might feel hard or it might feel soft. Imagine that it's tangible. And then gently imagine that you can reach into your energy body, pull it out and hold it in front of you. So imagine the, 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 white, the white light, the white ball. You've expanded it. It's now around you. You're no longer holding that white ball. You're now within the context of that white ball of, the, of intention. Now you're healing yourself within the context of this white ball. You pull out your energy block. You're now holding your block in front of you. Now as you imagine the block, you're going to gently ask yourself, where did this come from? And very often, a past memory may come up. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you don't have to know where it comes from. You could simply sense that this block represents unworthiness. This block represents that you don't deserve love. This block represents that money is hard. But see the color, see the block, and then you're going to love it into oblivion. And this is what you do. As you see this block, you speak to it with love. You let it know, hey, I don't blame you. I don't hate on you. I know you are part of me. You might get a memory that it came to you at a particular age. So I may say, you, you, the, the hard work equals money block came to me because I loved my mom and dad. I saw how hard they work and I wanted to understand why they work so hard. And so I created this conclusion that their way of life as immigrants was correct. Hard work was the way of survival. And maybe that was true in the eighties when I was growing up. Maybe it's not true right now. And so I appreciate you, I love you because you represent my honor and my love for my parents. But now I no longer need you. So with love, I ask you to disappear. And then we're gonna use a mantra from Christy Marie Sheldon and the mantra goes like this. And this is from her Unlimited Abundance program. So Christy is a really powerful medium. The mantra is this, I now uncreate, delete and destroy this block across all time, dimension, space and reality. I now want to create, delete, and destory, destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. And as you say that, you visualize the block like you can visualize it melting or burning up. And as it burning up, burns up, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until poof, it just disappears. And that's it. Now you're back in the white bubble of light. You take a deep breath and you now expand that light to all the four corners of the earth. So you can have what, that you, what you intend come to you without any subconscious blocks because your blocks will sabotage you. Your blocks will mess things up. Okay. You guys got the approach. And if you don't, don't worry, I'm going to guide you through it. Okay. So this is not in any mind Valley program. Um, so just take really good notes. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat it to you as you, um, as I guide you through it, but it goes like this. I now uncreate, delete, destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. I now uncreate, delete, destory, that means to take it out from the story of my life, destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. That's it. There's nothing special about that. I just like the way that sounds. So that's what I use. You can use any other mantra, like block, get the fuck out of me. <laughs> Whatever you want. But this one just seems really cooler and more mystical, right? Are you guys ready? 
Okay, so remember, you don't have to know, you don't have to be consciously aware of your block. You're going to feel it intuitively. And this is where your guides come in. You can ask your guide, where do you sense the block? And you can also ask your guides, help me, as you're burning up the block with love, ask your guides to help you remove it. But remember, you are observing the block with love. That is the key thing. You cannot remove it with hate, with anger, with regret. You have to be in a completely forgiving space. You have to see it as part of you. It sometimes helps if you think of it as something that was a part of a, a piece of a younger part of you, and now you want to remove it. Okay, Maria, I'd love to ask if you uh, if you want to share any of your your thoughts on this process. Well. Most of the time when people look at what is blocked in them, they very quickly start judging themselves. Like, oh, I, that is why I always have pain there, or that is what always, you know, give me problems. So do that in a very gentle way, right? With a lot of love and tenderness. I know later on you go into that love, but start with that love and tenderness before. And then when you see it as burning, you actually, with a fire, the, the fastest, color to clear up blockages is violet. So if you see it as violet fire, it goes quicker away out of your system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Violet fire, yes. Okay, Marie Diamond has a meditation on Mind Valley. You can listen to it on the, the Mind Valley meditation app. It's the violet flame and it's a meditation for forgiveness and it's really powerful. So let's use violet as that that burning up that fire to remove the blocks, okay? The blocks itself could be any color, black, green, red, white, it doesn't matter. It's whatever color and feeling that you feel. So now I want you to think about another aspect of your perfect day or your life manifesto. It could be the amount of time you have to work. It could be the quality of what you do. It could be the soulmate you're trying to attract. I want you to think of another aspect of that that you want to manifest. I'm going to give you a moment or two. Guys, please have like peaceful meditative music playing. Think about what you want to work on. Ideally, think about something that you know you've always wanted, but you've struggled with. That could be the sign that there's a block. You've done multiple ways to try to bring that into existence, but you've struggled with it. So ideally, pick something that is hard for you. For many people, it's money or love. Those are two of the things that we F up the most. Okay, if you still need time to choose, raise your hand so I can give you time. All right, it looks like everybody has their project. Okay, so this is gonna be called your project. This is what you're gonna work on. Now we're gonna go through the same protocol as before. I'm gonna repeat the same protocol. Could I get a chair on stage, please? Same protocol as before, but we're going to do the block removal thing. So again, I'm going to guide you into a deep, relaxed state of mind. I want you once again to imagine that you're walking on a really beautiful, peaceful beach. On each descending number, take a step forward. Feel your feet in the sand and feel yourself go deeper and deeper into a peaceful state of relaxation. Imagine the sea breeze touching your skin, the glint of sunlight rippling across the water. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, going deeper and deeper. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9,
are now in a deeply relaxed state of mind. I'm now going to call attention to your physical body to help your body relax even deeper. Feel your scalp relax. Feel this feeling of relaxation flow gently downward to your forehead, your eyes. Feel your eyelids relax. Feel how relaxed they are. Feel this feeling of relaxation move gently downward to your nose, your mouth, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders. Feel this feeling of relaxation move gently downward down your arms all the way down to your fingertips. Feel how relaxed your fingers are. Feel this feeling move downwards to your chest, your abdomen, your thighs, your knees, your calves, and all the way down to your feet. Feel it move to your toes. Feel how relaxed your toes are. You're now in a deeply relaxed state of mind. Imagine yourself now in your ideal place of relaxation and call upon your guides to your left and your right to support you in this healing and manifesting ritual. As you sense your guides with you, raise your physical hands and feel the energy between your hands. You're creating a new energy container for a new object or experience that you choose to bring into your life. Feel the energy between your hands. Create this container of white light. Know that your guides are with you and ask them to support you in this manifesting and block removal exercise. Now at the count of three, the first vibe will come to you. One, two, three. What is the vibe that came to you? What color is it? Drop it in your energy ball. Feel the feeling of this vibe in your heart area. At the count of three, the second vibe will come to you. One, two, three. What's the color of this vibe? Drop it in the energy ball. Feel the feeling of this vibe in your heart area. Feel how positive, how elated this feeling makes you feel. Bring in all the positive experiences you can think of. Now at the count of three, the third vibe comes to you. One, two, three. Feel this vibe. Drop it in the energy ball. What color is it? See all the colors swirl and dance together. Feel the feelings in your heart area. Each additional vibe amplifying the overall feeling that you're getting. Now as you look at the energy ball representing that which you want to create and attract into your life, Imagine that it has a consciousness and a life of its own. Ask it, with the help of your guides, what does it seek to experience with you? At the count of three, the first vibe will come to your mind. One, two, three. What was that vibe that came to you? What color is it? Drop it in the energy ball. Now at the count of three, the second vibe will come to you. One, two, three. What is that vibe? What color is it?
drop it in the energy ball. As you add these vibes, feel the feelings in your heart area. Now, the third vibe will come to you. One, two, three. The third vibe came to you. What color is it? Drop it in the energy ball. Feel all the feelings of the vibes in your heart area, each building up on the overall feeling. Magnify those feelings. Feel how amazing this feels. Amplify the feelings. Imagine as if you could turn a dial all the way to 11. Now take a deep breath and expand this energy ball so it's now covering your entire body. It's about as large as you need for you to fit inside it. Your guides are still with you, holding space and keeping you safe. Now as you're within this energy ball, I want you to scan your body from head to toe as if you have radar and feel if there's any blocks in your body. You might feel a block in a particular area of your body. Ask your guides to help you identify any blocks towards the manifesting of this outcome that you seek. As you feel where the block is, imagine as if you can put your arm on that area and just gently pull out the block and hold it in front of you. What color is the block? How does it feel? What is the shape? It might be soft or hard or metallic or spongy. Keep scanning. You might have several blocks in other areas too. Again, gently reach in. Imagine you can pull out the block and hold it in front of you. As you place the blocks in front of you, they stand in space, still. In front of you now, you can see the blocks to that which you are seeking to manifest. Imagine you can communicate with these blocks. Look at these blocks with love. They come from a younger, less aware version of you. And these blocks were not created to harm you. They were meanings that you created as a child to protect yourself to make sense of the world, to understand the actions of people that you love. You were a child though. You did not have the wisdom and the skills that you have today. So look upon these blocks with the same love that you would give a child. Now for some of you, a memory may come up. You may feel like you need to shed a tear or you may feel sad that's okay. Let the memory emerge. The memory may be your block reminding you of how it was formed. It is nothing more than a memory. Feel free to stay with the memory and observe it like an observer with love. Continue observing the blocks in front of you. Again with love and let them know that you no longer need them you appreciate them for what they may have given you you honor them for being with you there may have been a time when they were useful but now it's time to say goodbye we're now going to repeat the mantra seven times and each time we repeat the mantra, you're going to see the block burn up in a violet flame 
and get smaller and smaller. On the seventh time, the block will completely vanish and you will be free of this limitation for good. I want you to now repeat the mantra mentally after me. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. As you say that, see the block burn up in a violet flame, getting smaller and smaller. Repeat again. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. The block is getting smaller and smaller. It's almost half the size it was before. Again, observe the block with love. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. The block is now a tiny fraction of its original size. Look at it one more time with love and appreciation for how it sought to protect you. And on this final repeat of the mantra, the block will completely dissolve and disappear in a violet flame. Your guides are around you. They are supporting you. Again, ask them for help in removing this block. I now uncreate, delete, and destory this block across all time, dimension, space, and reality. The block is now completely burned. It doesn't exist. You might feel a different energy, a different essence in your being. You are still within the energy of the white sphere of light that represents what you seek to manifest. Bring your awareness now to the essence and the vibes of this white light. You remember the vibes. Feel them in your heart again. Feel the positive energy, the emotions, the feelings of these six vibes inside you. Give thanks to your guide for their support. Feel the consciousness of that which you are seeking to create and know that it can now come into your being unrestricted. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, imagine this light going to all the directions of earth, north, south, east and west to go forth, to make itself real and to bring itself into your reality. Thank your guides, and you are now done. I'm going to bring you out of this session. I'm gonna count from one to five. At the count of five, you'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, three, getting ready to open your eyes. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. So, how did that go for you guys? I'd love, I'd love to give yourself a round of applause firstly. Awesome, everyone. So you now learned a couple of new tools to bring into your life. You got the manifesto down. Okay, and if you wanna go deeper in that, take the Lifebook program. You have two counselors that you can call upon, guides, you learn how to create an intention, an intention container of that which you want to manifest, and you learn how to scan your body and remove blocks. So these are now tools that you can walk away from. You don't need me, you don't need to come back here, but, but please come back here next year. Please buy my next book. But you don't need 
to be guided by me to do this. You now have these tools and you can use them anytime. But I'd love to have a few shares. If anybody wants to share what emerged from that exercise, if you had something that is really worth sharing, Mike Runners, please. Those, those women back over, way back over there. Um, I got back in, I got into Mind Valley uh, when your book, um, The Code of the Extraordinary right. Mind, came out in 2017. And I was doing life insurance back then, I right. was in network marketing. And I got married, I like um, opened my own office. Mm -hmm. But then everything like got so crazy that I started getting seizures. I see. So I just pulled that out. <laughs> That's awesome. So. Okay. So let's see what happens, all right? Now, now sometimes, so people ask me, how often do I have to do this? Typically just once. If you do it right, just once. You are not manifesting and healing yourself just on your own. You're calling upon guides. If you believe in a higher power, call upon that higher power as well. That's, that is really going to accelerate the manifesting and the healing. Okay? Jose Silva also says when you're feeling that intention of what you want to create, see other people benefiting. If what you're creating is good for a larger segment of humanity, maybe it's a product, maybe it's a service, a company would obviously create jobs, it's more likely to happen. The universe works that way. So you know the tools, you can now apply this, but you typically just have to do it once. So I find that I only have to do these once for a particular problem. Now, you can also Sometimes um, we have the wrong people in our life, right? And we want those people out. So I, I, had, um, um, I had someone working for me that was n troublesome. And I just needed to part ways with this person and just get it done. And so I did this exercise. And, the, and within one week, we parted ways and there was no more issue. So you can also use this to get rid of the energy, to heal and remove the energy of maybe an ex or someone that is dragging you down or someone that has the sending the wrong energy to you. So you can also manifest that cleanness and clarity and freedom in your life as well. But typically you only have to do it once. Now, if Jose Silva has this advice, if you do it once and 72 hours later, you still haven't seen that which you feel manifest. Now, sometimes it won't manifest immediately, but you immediately feel lighter. You feel more positive. You feel that it's coming. That's a good thing. You don't have to do it again. As long as you have the feeling that it's on its way, you're on the right track. But if you feel that you go back into doubt or you go back into worry, then you do it again. Okay, so every time you do this, you're building up your reservoir of beliefs, but you only have to do it once. You don't want to be like that annoying kid in the car asking the universe, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Right? Just give your commandment once and then trust that it's going to happen. But like I said, if you have doubts, then you may do it again. But typically you would do it again after 72 hours, three days. You don't want to keep pushing it. The universe like, is really busy.